Breathing in diesel exhaust fumes is like walking into a fire without a mask. Over time, those toxins lead to cancer. Protect yourself with MagnaGrip, the easiest, most reliable exhaust removal system that features a true 100% seal to eliminate diesel exhaust fumes. To get free grant assistance, visit MagnaGrip.com. Hey, welcome back to our Fire Engineering Podcast, The Command Post. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my best buddy, Chief John Salka. And as we always say, we have another great show lined up for you today. Um, uh, and and we, we mentioned this, uh, golly, on our Hump Day Hangout. Uh, our best format, John, has always been, has always been no script, no agenda, no notes. Um, you and I get on the phone or we'll, we'll be talking and all of a sudden it's like, hey, how about we do a show on this? I, I've always told people, I love when I get you on there. I go, so John, what do you want to talk about? You go, uh, let's talk about the K tool. And we do like 40 minutes on the K tool. And it, it, it it's like sitting around the kitchen or sitting on the apparatus floor, uh, just talking with the troops. It's always worked out great that way. So um, I think you said it uh, once before. It's worked great for us. Why change it now? You know? Um, and so. That being said, a uh, uh, quick little note, um, uh, we're out there doing our programs. We're going to be in uh, Evergreen, Colorado, coming up here in, a, in, in a, uh, about a week and a half for our uh, company, or, or, sorry, Chief Officer Field Training Academy. That's for the battalion chiefs and the shift chiefs and all. So if you can make it out there, uh, come on out and see us. Um, you can catch all that information if you want it on, I know, on my website calendar at chieflasky.com. And then uh, big news, FDIC, we're back at FDIC. Uh, with uh, Chief David Rhodes and Diane, uh, uh, Diane uh, Rothschild and uh, the group. Um, one of the programs we do uh, quite often there is the Three Degrees of May Day. We're doing that again. We packed the classroom this last year, and uh, we're going to bring it back. And then the other program, John, um, we did it for years and years and years, and you and I were like, God, are we doing this again? But every time we look out in the audience, the audience, the room was full. And that was our five-alarm leadership, real leadership, real people. Um everything we cover in that is in our leadership book and then some in the book. Um, and we went away from it. We went to uh, the Chief Foster Field Training Academy. We went to uh, the Fireground Scenario Workshop, um, organizing the Fireground. Um, and people kept asking, when are you bringing it back? When are you going to come back? And uh, we're back. We, we that, That'll that be our four-hour workshop, buddy, on Monday. Always a pleasure doing Five Alarm Leadership. It's a great I mean, it's it's a great universal topic, good for every rank, good for every situation. Everybody doesn't get everything out of it, but everybody gets something out of it. Everybody comes up to us, a guy with two years on the job saying, I'm eligible to be a lieutenant next year. This has been very helpful, you know, for the test or very helpful when I start acting. Other guys come up to us and say, I've been a captain for 15 years and, you know, I've never heard some of this stuff before. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. I can't wait to get back and. I've never learn. heard some of this stuff you talk about. We've been teaching together since the mid nineties. You'll bring stuff out, and I'll go. You remind me, uh, Chief Tom Freeman, one of my mentors. You heard me tell this story. You're the same way because I find myself doing this when we teach together. Sometimes, it, I would be teaching with Tom at U of I, the Fire Service Institute. We'd be doing like a hands-on thing, John, and we come out after doing a live burn, and we're standing around and doing our little recap. And he turned to me and goes, so, Rick, what do you got? And I'd go, can you go over number three again? <laughs> I've done that before where I'm in class with you and I start taking notes. Um, I think it's amazing, you know, that we can be doing this as long as we are or have been. And I still find stuff interesting and new just when we teach, let alone, let alone when we sit at programs. And I've mentioned this on some of our other shows I, at first, I was kind of amazed when I see somebody post a picture like it was at the the Teaks Leadership Symposium. We mentioned this not too long ago. Um, 
in in Frisco, Texas. And they someone took a picture, and it was Bill Gustin and you sitting next to each other in the front row of someone else's program taking notes. You had your binder. Bill had his notepad. And the kid behind is like, I just got done watching their programs, and here they are, you know, taking notes. And I'm like, why is that? Why is that? Why is that so amazing? You know, we're always learning. We're always doing stuff. Which which brings me to maybe our our topic um, uh, for for today. Um, uh, maybe let's talk about today's fire service, you know, and, and John, you've heard me say this and, and, and I'll, I'll throw this out of there and then open it up to you again. Obviously, you, you know, I, I get going and I'm, I, I guess it's my, the word is the disdain. If that's the right word, I've heard you use that before for the people that like to blame generations, the people who like to, that have forgotten what they were like when they were young firefighters. And, and I go back in time and, you know, lately I've been, I've been going back thinking, what was I like? And you know, there's there's a lot of times I know I pissed off some of the senior guys, being the young, overly aggressive, very very smart, um, worldly experienced, brand new firefighter. Um, I, I just saw a post from a guy that was a firefighter came out when I was working that I went, oh my god, look at this guy, and he's a battalion chief and he's doing great stuff. Um, you know, I, I just I, I don't get the whole. Blame and gen- each generation is different, obviously, and there's different things you need to know about it. Just like different buildings out there, when it comes to fighting fires, hold different trap doors and dangers and stuff. You got to know your buildings. You got to know your people too. And we mentioned this uh, in one of our classes not that long ago, and I mentioned this at the FDIC advisory board meeting, John, about today's fire service. You can't scroll. You and I, we do the social media stuff. You can't scroll through Instagram or. TikTok or any of those things, and not see thousands. It's like you you roll through videos for about ten years or so. It seemed like um, we got away from hands on. We were into the softer, less aggressive, um, whatever the hell you know, kind of fire service. And now, Jim, it's the guys you and I love. These young guys that that are wearing, they got their bunker pants on, they got a baseball cap on, they're on the nozzle showing the, the probies how to, how to work the line, or they're forcing doors or they're cutting holes. The hands-on training is back, and there's a ton of people out there teaching it. So I guess I'll throw that to you to start off. Like, your thoughts on, on today's fire service. I don't think it's I don't think it's like what some of us are making out to be is this bad thing. I think there's some pretty incredible people out there doing some great stuff. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think maybe over the past 10 years, and, and, and the time period doesn't really matter, but it's been, a, you know, obviously it's been the past 10 years or so. Uh, there was always, listen, there's always some voices. There's always some some negative voices out there complaining about this or complaining about that, whether it's about the, the generations or about the regions or about volunteers or career. There's always people that are trying to divide and, and, and you know, complain about things. And then there are people like us and like most of the fire service, most of the instructors and attendees that – you know, FDIC and all the big shows. Then there's the people that are positive. Trying to be positive about everything. Trying to trying to turn everything into something. Trying to turn even even the, the least well run, the least attended hands on training session. Guy guys make a good day out of it anyway. So you know what? We expected more people, but we had a great day, and and we all got to do it more frequently because there weren't so many people here. And so, I, so I agree with you that the the fire service is uh, experiencing a resurgence, not just in. Um, not just in training, hands-on training in particular, but not just hands-on training. There is training going on everywhere. You and I do a lot of lecturing and a lot of, you know, you know, graduations and proby classes and 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 dedications. And we do a lot of stuff that's not hands-on training. We did we were big in hands-on training years ago, but we do less of it now. But don't worry, because our boots have been filled. Our boots have been filled by a whole new generation of people out there, firefighters, lieutenants, captains, big cities, small cities places you never heard of and never will hear of again and places where the, every other guy is from there. And there's great training going on out there. So that's, so that's the good news. That, that's one of the big positive things about today's fire service is I, I think they've, uh, they think they turned the corner and I'm, I'm trying not to be judgmental. Like, like, like they weren't any good a little while ago, but things are just going really well right now. So if you are a, a new or a young firefighter, there are so many great opportunities for training. And frankly, uh, you don't have to be rich. Your department doesn't have to have a big training budget. A lot of stuff is free and available online. You can sign up and go to all sorts of uh, webcasts and stuff like that. Uh, never mind going to 
a lot of great, great hands on training all around. The oh, and, and what, what right here with fire engineering, the fire engineering is doing with the, with the, uh, the fire Academy. I mean, they're, they're posting videos and classes and doing things. Um, not everybody has the budget, like you said, to go out and, and do all this different stuff and spend all this money. And you can subscribe to that and get, I don't think you can get through all the training on that site, uh, it's like going, like you've always said, go to YouTube and type in Firefighter Mayday, and then three years from now, tell me if you've gotten through all the videos. It's the same thing with that stuff. D let me ask you this. So do you think, you know, and I'm not trying to pick on the, the old timers in the fire service because I still think we're not there. You know, we've been doing this over 40 years, and you're still extremely active with your volunteer department. I am as well. Um you know, with Wichita West and, uh, and we're, we're doing great things and so on and so forth. But I don't know if it's so, like some of the old guys, I don't know if they're not willing to acknowledge, you know, it's always been that way. If you look, I'm going back in time and you, I remember seeing this, acknowledging the fact that there are up and comers. You just said it perfectly. Our boots have been filled and with great people. And I, you know, sometimes I hear people say stuff, John, they come up during class and go, you know, it's not our same fire service anymore. And I'm like, thank God we'd still be drunk in a firehouse and doing stuff and, right, you know, doing stupid ass stuff. You know, yeah, yeah the fire, I, me being the history buff that I am in the fire service, 1736 was a long time ago when Ben Franklin created the first volunteer fire department. And we've changed quite a bit since then as well. And somebody thought they were crazy. You know, when I go back and I do the, like the, um, uh, when the engine companies were like 60 member, 80, 100 member companies for one engine, because in order to, in order to pump that, that pump and, and, you know, guys were falling out at fires and things, you had to have waves of guys to take over. And then the steam fire engine came and all the old timers, they threw sevens. They were so mad because it's cut and stab, all this stuff. And they did the contest. Uh, they used to have contests. I have some portraits of who could who could who could throw the the longer stream, um, the, the the steam engine or the hand drawn the hand drawn pump, and believe it or not, the hand drawn pump could go further, but they couldn't go longer. The steam engine, as long as you keep feeding it water, and cold, it it ran forever. And then they then you know after after the Black Plague and different things affected manpower, they went with horses. And oh my God, firefighters threw their minds all over the place. They were they're all upset because now we're getting rid of staffing. It, this this evolution over all these years since 1736 of the fire service, I I don't know if it's just some guys, John. Your thoughts? I some I think some guys just aren't willing to acknowledge that there's there's some pretty just like you you said it perfectly. Some pretty freaking incredible. Young guys and gals out there doing some incredible stuff in classes. And, you know, and, and, you, know, yeah. and you yeah. look at your – I'll pick on one of your kids, all right? You got five great kids. Brian Salka, firefighter for two great departments, firefighter with you now. That was little Brian. You know, that was – I remember that was little – I remember I, I remember pictures of him when he was about – you know. And he's he's a freaking incredible. So you know what I'm saying? Are we not seeing that? Are some of the old guys not willing to acknowledge that we've got some young guys and gals doing some great stuff? Absolutely. And and if you look, and if you look long enough and hard enough, you're going to find stuff again, again online. I mean, you can't you can't even talk about looking anywhere but online now. Online is uh, online is the source for what everything in the world, and and it's the source for fire training too. And if you type in there, hands-on training, I mean, you could probably type in regional, hands-on training, East Coast, hands-on training, New York State, hands-on training, you know, California. As I already mentioned, but I repeat myself, there's so much available out there. And I just always have to talk about, and I always have to, I always have to give a plug for FDTN, Fire Department Training Network. Jimmy McCormick runs probably. I mean, and I've been there and I've taught there, and my son has attended there. And I'll tell you what, that's got to be one of the most realistic, re you know, actual technically correct and not only technically correct the operations but technically correct training methods too on how to teach people how to fight fires under probably some of the most realistic conditions anywhere there are people that go there you know unfortunately for them to see their first fire and there are people that go there and do 20 and 30 and 40 fires in a weekend and, and go there once a year and, and and get tremendous experience 
doing all sorts of stuff from forceful entry to engine work to truck work to to roof work and area ladders and portable ladders and SCBA. They even they even have uh, they even have it all set up for you know the places that are full of junk and and you know we have to crawl through uh, you know abandoned apartments and things like that. It's just really phenomenal what he's done there. He basically built a little fire town and he's got a great crew of instructors from all over the country, volunteer, career, big department, small department, <coughs> and an even greater group of people that run the operation behind the scenes. The guys that shovel out, the guys that shovel out if the fires are out and take all the embers out and, and put the new boards up and a new hay and light it and let it get going before they say, you know, attention engine one, you two, respond to this certain street, put the fire out. What, what a great organized effort he's got there. And I know there are others. I know there are others, maybe not to the same level as his, but there are other really good training academies, uh, both municipal and privately owned and association owned all over the country that, that you really have to avail yourself to. You, you can't, you can't live in Hooterville, be a member of the Hooterville fire department. Even if you do a couple of fires a year and say, this is good, this is good. I'll get this down. You know what? You will get it down in about 75 <laughs> years, you know, you, you, you really got to get your pick yourself up, shake yourself off, and get out of town. You got to go somewhere new once a year, once every other year. I know everybody doesn't have the means to do it all the time and see what's going on out there at some of these big shows and some of these not so big shows and 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 work with some people that you never met before and see what you Well, can and learn. you said it, and you, you just said about going to Jimmy's place about maybe that's their first fire. They're going there for their first fire. And we talk about this in class. How many times have guys come up and said, Hey, Chief Salka, you know, we, we we haven't been first in at a fire in three years. I, and let's talk a career place, let alone the valleys, where we're just in a newer subdivision, our station. We've been second doing, third doing, second doing, third doing. Like B-Shift, they've been first doing, but we just haven't. And that's normal. It, 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 you know, there's, you know uh, uh, there's very few cities that are fire city like it used to be in the old days. They're still doing work. Don't get me wrong, but some of these places – like you said, that may be the only chance you get to go do live fire, so you feel a little bit of heat, and you you can you can crawl around in limited or zero visibility, and, and work a hand line and do all that stuff. So you've got to go. You you got it. You've got now for those that can't. Now let me back that up for a second, because not everybody has the money, like you said, or the means to travel, get hotels, and stay. It's one thing to be at FDIC. It's one thing to be at Jimmy's place or whatever, and have these. The, the, the Brian Salkas going, ah, I can't get enough of this stuff. Let's back that up a, a couple a couple miles, John. We, we go to classes. We do programs sometimes for 40 people, sometimes for 300 people. And we have these young firefighters. It's one thing to get in a car, get an airplane, and fly to a conference or fly somewhere. It's another thing, and you, you and I have said this. How many times do we say, you always say this, we got the coolest job in the world. We get to go hang. I, I tell people, my buddy John says this all the time. We get to hang with the coolest people in the world. We get to go have dinner with them. We get to talk shop. We get to teach classes. They come up and they talk. And afterwards, they just and you you get there full of energy. You leave tired, but you're, you're it's a it's it's you're full of this just this this great feeling. And and these young guys and gals will come out on a Saturday, John. They'll rearrange a whole freaking day of their life. Beautiful, sunny, could be out golfing, working out in their yard, doing stuff, building shop, whatever. And they rearrange their whole day to come hang with us in a classroom. And that's what I see. I see these young, that's why you and I were always signing the posters and the stuff and taking pictures. How many times people come, I see them, you, know, you think, I said, Chief Salk will take a picture with you. Come on, I grab their camera, right, John, picture time. And they just want to get their picture with you. And they're 18. Some of them are explorers and juniors in, in high school still. They're 20 year old and they're, they're us. Like you and I, when I look at those pictures of us, like the pictures of me and Tom Brennan, remember I'm standing next to me and I'm beaming. I'm taking I'm taking my picture with Tom Brennan, and then with, with John Norman, when you know who went from he's still one of my idols and mentors to being such a good friend. That was us, you know. And now we see that with with like I said, the conferences, like you said, are wonderful. They're great, and if you can go, you gotta go. But rearranging a whole, some people drive seven, eight hours to see John Salka teach, you know, in Kentucky or in, in, in Oregon or Florida, whatever. They drive forever to come. <clears throat> and and we, we're good because we feel we, 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 we owe them that great day, that great program. But 
that in itself says something about today's fire service, where people rearrange their lives, and they always have. But you, I think sometimes we tend to forget that. You know, and I, I saw a picture. Yeah. We're going to Northport in December, Northport, Florida. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I think that is that your that's gonna be your first time in Northport, isn't it? Is that your first time? Oh, yes. Oh my God! I can't. Yeah. I can't wait for you to be there, buddy. I I said it was there last time when they talked about. But we maybe we should have you and Chief Salka. I'm like, oh my God! I even told you, John. These guys are awesome, and they just posted a picture yesterday. Some young kid. Didn't know he, they, he eventually he knew they're taking his pictures. He's scrubbing the tires and, and armor all and doing this and working. And it's not the daily routine. And I'm like, and they're all talking pride and ownership and stuff like that. You, you know, there are plenty of those people out there. So let me ask you this your, your, your yardstick, your benchmark, if you will, for a great program. I'll go. So, so John, how was it in uh, Amboy, or how well Amboy's easy because we love Jeff right now. But I'll say, so what? What was the group? And you go, Rick. It was another Birmingham, and you talk about Birmingham, Alabama. That's your benchmark. Remember, you're like, it. I remember you talking about it. You, you got done teaching. You go. This is one of the greatest programs, the greatest groups ever had. So, that's always been your measurement. Is well, they weren't quite a Birmingham, or they were a Birmingham. Why was Birmingham so special to you? You still talk about it today. That was years ago. Yeah, and, you know, it, it was just and, – and more and more places are like that nowadays. You know, it was just a place that was ahead of its time. All the, all the training people, all the staff, all the officers were really into it. It wasn't like every other one was into it. Every other one was waiting to go home, you know. And every firefighter, the newest guy in the room, got treated the same as the guy with 10 years with his enthusiasm and what getting a good seat and making sure he could see the screen and talk to the, the instructors and – and, and then, you know, how they treated the, the, the visiting instructors, us, how they treated the guys that were coming in just, you know, to teach for a day or two. Again, they, they treat you like gold. You feel like, feel like you're visiting family somewhere sometimes with these guys. And not that other guys don't treat you like that, but some other guys that just do a little bit more business like, okay, okay, well, Billy's going to bring you back to the hotel and, and, you know, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock again. And we have a nice breakfast and hope you guys, have, you know, hope you enjoy the hotel. And other guys are like, oh, we'll be back at 6.30 to pick you back up. we got a big thing, you know, planned for tonight to go somewhere. And not that we need to be dragged out or 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 partied or, you know, brought to the nicest restaurant in town. But but we do appreciate it when it happens. And 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 it all just goes towards uh, them creating a positive atmosphere about what? About being a firefighter, about training, about learning, about knowing your job. And all those things, all those things carry on all those things where does that start though? and create where, where so where do they get that you you just mentioned all those traits where does that start how how does the young kid rick lasky you know i walk in i bumble into a firehouse i don't care if my dad was at a job or not you know how how do who who, who sets that for those people who's the one that says this is how we're going to operate well i'll tell you it's hard to say because you know you look at a guy like Jeff Bryant, and you know he—he's the motor at that fire department. You know he's got a lot of help, and he's got a lot of good guys that work with him. Scott, but yeah. you can see where he is. He's the cog in the wheel. You know, some fire departments it's one or two people. Some fire departments it's the chiefs. Some fire departments it's the commissioners who really have a bigger influence. Some places have mediocre chiefs, but a great crew of company officers that just love the job and call the guys out to the firehouse all the time and hang out on Friday nights. You know smoking cigars and having sodas and waiting for a fire to come in in the next house and they can be first due there, you know, at the job. And there's no answer to that question. The answer is there's a lot of different people that have a dramatic positive impact on fire departments and fire departments training routines, you know, and the more you have, the better. But but it's got to be creative if it doesn't exist. You got to have somebody. Otherwise, people just show up like robots on Monday night or Tuesday night or Wednesday night, go through the motions, check the saw, pull it, you know, before you know it, everybody's going home and it's over. And those are the places where people come and join and stay well, two or three years and then leave and go somewhere and you're else. Talk, you've said it before about being the spark. You go back to your department, and it doesn't matter where you're at on that roster. You know, you, you and I have said it before to the probies in class. There's there's probies coming behind you. There's rookies coming behind you. You're gonna have a year in the you're you're gonna have a year in your department, and they're gonna be looking to you. You know, be the example, be the role model, be the positive energy that they have to draft off of. And I think that helps us, John, get past the crappy times when you have a bad boss 
or you you know whether that's a bad battalion chief or a captain or a bad chief of department, you and I have been there. I've been there. I worked for a god awful horrible fire chief, and that was that 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 was the job was to go there and go. Okay, this guy's a nitwit, a knucklehead. You know all the all the paperwork in the world. One of these guys, right? But he could lead his way out of a paper bag. He was hated by the troops, so we had to go out there and generate the the energy. You know, and then I go to Bedford Park where I have Bob Rubel as the chief, and I'm like, oh my god! And it's one of those bosses you didn't realize till later in life just how fortunate you were to have that person. You, I want to pick on Sal Blooming Grove. I always do it because it's a great fire department. Your volunteer fire department, where you've been with for a long time, Big Daddy. Talk, talk about we talk about the young firefighters coming door, and they walk in, they see him, and they say maybe the chief Pete, and they see pick me three. D- describe Big Daddy, describe your current chief Pete, all right, and then describe for me one of your newest ball of energy. You you mentioned one the other day that was always like there there are calls always cleaning always working. Pick three. Talk about Big Daddy. Why is he so special to you? Then Pete, and then pick me a a young firefighter to brag on. Big Daddy's a great guy, Billy Pappas. Great I guy. Love- He's been around for a long time. Often, often gets the Chiefs Award or the Commissioner's Award or the Firefighter of the Year Award because he's just around all the time. You know, he he lives no closer to the firehouse. Well, he does now because he actually moved in the district from one place to another. But he lived most of the time, and you know, no closer than anybody else. But he's always the first guy at the firehouse. He can he can n- now. Number one, he's seventy one years old. He, yeah. He's one of the oldest guys. You never know. And he never misses you'd run. never know that. You would we, never know that. You'd never know it. We we had a run last night about eleven forty five. I was already in bed. The tones went off. Up up up. Out I go. I get to the firehouse. There's about five or six guys there, and, and there he is. He's in the driver's seat already. I did make the rig. I made the run. But the point is, he's one of the guys. You know, here I am. I'm sixty five. I'm the next oldest guy in the company practically, and and I'm there. You know, there's others around our age as well. And then the rest of them are a bunch of kids. A bunch of kids, 23, 24, 25, 26 years old. Will, talk about Will Morris. Will's a great guy. He's one of the young lieutenants. He's a driving force behind a lot of the stuff that happens in a firehouse. He built the big wooden table that we have between two of the rigs right in the middle of the apparatus floor, which is where we were hanging out last night after the run. Obviously, you know, uh, Pete Castellano was a 27-truck guy in the Bronx, guy I worked with when I was in the 18th Battalion. He's the chief of South Bloom and Grove. Another great guy. His brother used to be there. His brother was chief as well before he moved. And uh, we, we just have a great crew there. We, we, have a, we have a bigger membership than we do a response group. You know, a lot more people show up for meetings and, and drills than for runs, which I, well, I've never been happy about. But I think that's true in lots of places. And in, in our travels, I hear that in lots of firehouses. But we do have a great core of guys that show up for every run. We fill every seat. Locally, lately, we fill every seat, which I'm you very told me that about. you get Somebody up there. New young kids you, that, John, I'm sorry, you told me you got up there and the rig's full is pulling out, and you get there quickly. Like we got, there's not an empty seat for me when I get there. That's pretty awesome. Yep, yep. Like last night, we left two guys on the apparatus floor because there was no seats left in the rig. You know, which I felt bad about. I should have stayed back. We ended up having like two or three lieutenants on the rig um, because. You know, we were two or three of the five guys that showed up. Obviously, we're not going to leave guy back for no reason. But we try and leave one lieutenant back if there's more than two. And but but we had two two guys back at the firehouse ready to bring the truck up to the run or a second do engine or whatever else we needed or even cover another alarm. Obviously, another run could come in. It's happened. I can't tell you how many times, but it's not rare. It happens now and then. So those are all those are all habits and policies and and you know traditions that that my fire department has that others can others can have as well. Once people start living it and doing it. Well, and, and it comes back to it. The reason I was going that way, not just because I love your guys, but we've said this when people come up to us in class and they go, Chief Salka, um, I'm getting ready to get promoted to company officer. My first time, I would be a lieutenant, never been a company officer. What advice do you give me, you know, as a new lieutenant walking into the firehouse to my volley place or my career place? Good advice. And I've, we've both said this. We both said this. You know, you know, the best advice we can give you, yeah, we could care about your guys and train, train, all this stuff we talk about all the time. But lately we've been telling them, you know, lately for a few years now is, so pick the great one, pick the great boss. You know, what lieutenant, like for me, Bill Allen, you know, it's like, if you're going to pick a lieutenant to be like, to emulate, to 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 glean some, some values, some traits off of, 
Pick the great ones. Don't pick the buffoon. Don't pick the lazy ass. The guy's sewing the recliner. It's the same thing. John, when the firefighter comes up, says, <clears throat> I'm, "I'm, you know, I'm j I just got hired, you know, by Lewis Fuller. I just got hired, but ever, you know, what advice do you have the new firefighter? Pick the great ones. Don't pick the buffoon. Don't pick the class clown. Don't pick the jackass. Pick the great one. Pick the one that you you notice. The battalion chief or the, the captain always goes, Salka, come here for a second. Go take care of this. You know, the go-to guys. You know, pick, pick, you know, and I guess that comes down to John with me and you. We're way too competitive in a good way. Not the idiot way, but we, you know, we can't settle for mediocre. You and I have never been able to settle for mediocre or or just okay or just get by people. We've that those people meets expectations. You know, you've you've talked about a couple officers before. Captain Leisure, some other people, they, they're, they're not horrible people, but they just do just what they have to do to get by. And then you talk about the Billy Pappases and the other people and go, could you imagine what he was like when he was younger? That didn't happen later on in life. He has been that way his whole life. You know, so right. we, we've told these people, pick the good ones, pick the great ones, you know, and you and I actually did a whole show. On, on on these people. We talked about, talk about just those great firefighters and we ran out of time. We were like, do you remember this guy? You remember that? And and, the, and, and then it would be like, you start picking apart, why were they great? Because they showed up early. They showed up early for drill. They showed up early for the shift. They always had a broom in their hand. John, we've got a couple of young guys that I've worked with that I've had to almost guilt them, buddy. I, I, I remember talking to two of them. I'm standing out there and I'm watching Jimmy Spears, right, at Wichita West, watching Jimmy Spears it's drill night, all right? We're checking rigs. We're done checking rigs. And, and uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Let me back it up. It was after a call. And we're washing we're washing hose on the apron. And the two, one of the youngest firefighters, he's standing there with his hands in his pocket watching. And I go, look at that guy. And I, I told him, I said, look, that guy's amazing. They go, what? I go, he's not a new guy. He's, you know, he's, in, 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 and he's been living a life for a while. He's not a kid. And he's got a broom, he's got a broom in his hand and he's sweeping the apron. And if he's not sweeping the apron, he's taking the garbage off. He's not doing this. I'm like, and I'm talking to a young firefighter going, I'm I'm giving I'm dropping some hints for you here, dude. You know, look at that guy and go, you know, nobody's gonna nobody wants to hang with the lazy ass, right? Nobody wants to hang with the person who just stands there with their hands in their pockets. And anybody could show for the call and jump on a rig. What about cleaning? Get a get a get a damp rag and wipe down the dashboard of the engine that's all dusty. You know, clean a compartment, do something, take the garbage out, sweep the floor, vacuum the train room. You know, it's it's always amazing to me that it's like the young sometimes once in a while you get those people that don't catch the hints. And that brings me back to us, you and I, and the Billy Pappases and the PCAS and those kind of people that are going. Mark Venzer, uh, you haven't met Mark yet, one of our lieutenants at Wichita West. The guy's one of the hardest working people I've met in my life, John. He is always, if he's not mowing the grass at the firehouse, you know, at Wichita West, he's doing something. You know, he's always, to, you know, it's one of those guys, I, I nicknamed him Caffeine. I said, <laughs> I nicknamed him Caffeine because the guy is just like, cocaine would be a waste of time on him. I'm just saying, that guy, he just, he's always doing stuff. And there's the people for the young people, you know, so be a role model because even the guys I'm talking about that are standing with their hands in their pockets, they're not bad people, but no one's showed them, John, right? No one's told them. Nobody's walked up and go, see, and handed them a broom. Nobody's walked up and handed them a garbage bag. It's not that you're being like, you know, sometimes, right, they need to be pushed and prodded to take care of the firehouse and the rig, right? Absolutely. And, and, and I see it all over the place. And so do you. And most places <clears throat> it is the, the good guy, the role model. It is the guy that that's, that's got great traits to pass along that, that the young guys look at and follow and want to be with and want to hang out with. And the guy that steps up to run the drill or make a correction for a guy doing something, maybe not quite exactly right. So, and that's, that's one of the, that's one of the positive traits about good, good new modern fight department with good new young guys that are evolving today. Well, so so let, let's 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 work on closing this one out, um, and we always do that. We always do a little summary, a little recap in that. Um, we're talking about today's fire service and the fact that I don't think we should be as worried as some people make it out to be. I think I think there's a lot of false paranoia. Are there are there are there people out there, John? 
in the fire service today was like a little over 1.2 million firefighters, just under 40,000 fire parts in the United States, and a and a ton in our and our our, our 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 fire service family in Canada. Um, there's a there's tens there's hundreds of thousands of great firefighters. There's a couple. There's always a couple. Your your son is a very what you, your son James is a major in the United States Marine Corps. Decorated. Two bronze stars, Valor Devices, Marsop, incredible, incredible, incredible Marine Corps officer. I bet you if we sat down with him and said, out of all the Marines, are there a couple that you go, yeah, they're just, you know, even the United States Marine Corps probably has one or two people that, you know, probably need to retire or go away, as great as they are. So the fire service, I'm saying, is no different. We've got a couple nitwits. But we've got a whole ton of great ones. What do you say to our audience, to the people who are in a classroom? What do you do to produce that in your fire department? To the, 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 you know, what do you do to produce that? Energy? Well, well, number one, if you're a new guy or a new girl, if you're a new member, that's the person you want to be. That's the person you want to look for. You want to see who you want to model yourself after. And then that's, that's who you want to be. That's how you have to start from day one. The minute you get in the firehouse, people are watching. People see what type of person you're going to be, what type of firefighter you're going to be, you build a reputation right away. That's number one. Number two, if you're an officer or a chief, those are the people you got to keep your eyes open for. And those those numbers are growing, I think, in the fire service now. I think there's a there's sort of, you know, people say, oh, the volunteer fire service is dead, it's dying, we got to do something. And, and there's problems. There's problems in the volunteer fire service because of lack of volunteers and lack of people turning out and lack of people having time or financial ability to do that. But but the volunteer fire service is still alive in lots of places and still healthy. And you know what? We, we see now that you can run a fire department with 40 people. You don't have to have 150. You know, in the old days, a company would have 50 people. There'd be three companies in a volunteer fire department. They'd have 150 members. And now they have 23 members per company. Now they're doing it with about 70 people instead of 150. And, and they're still they're still working. They're still putting the fires out. People are still busy doing what they're doing. The ones that come around are still the ones that like doing it. So, you know, if you are involved, if you are interested, the volunteer fire service or the career fire service, both of them, uh, I think that I think they're alive and well, and I think they're actually sort of on an upswing right now in, in a lot of ways. Not in every way, but in a lot of ways. There's some things that need to be done, but I think there's still a we're still attracting a good quality people into the fire service that that'll handle some of these problems. Well, and I and I agree with you, and and I go back to. And he's 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 not a young kid anymore, but he's still young. The young Brian Salka, the energy level that he has, and then I, I turn around. I, I tease you. You met my chief Ryan Fetzer from Wichita West. Great guy. We're so blessed to have him as our fire chief. I love working for the guy. But I will look at him once in a while, John. I look. I go. We've got a great roster, man. You know, I look at some of the other departments and go and look at all the problems. And we're not free from problems. And and he'll be the first one to tell you. There's times he just has to unplug you. Look how long you were the. We both been chiefs. You know, it doesn't matter. Career volunteer. They you see the same freaking problems, the same headaches as a career volunteer fire chief. Once in a while, he's like, I gotta. He, you, know, you can tell he's got to go home and unplug for like a few hours because he's had enough with the phone calls and the stuff and people doing stupid shit, that kind of stuff. Cause it, it, it don't go away just because you're not with the FDNY with 300 firehouses. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it happens everywhere, but I'll look at him and go, God, we got a great roster. I'll go through the roster. I'll go, you know, even the ones that you look at, you go, they still bring stuff to the table. They're out there. You know, they may not be the most experienced. They may not be the most into it, but they're, they're, they're scrubbing hose and they're doing things. And we get these brush fires and they're working their asses off out there you know, for me, running from rattlesnakes and, and fighting fires, um, you know, I think the fire service is alive and well. And and I, I love what I'm seeing. I love the young firefighters, John, we were talking about. I love the energy. I love seeing them in classes. I love when they rearrange a whole day or a whole week or whatever to come and hang with us. And, and I again, I'll say it again. You say it all the freaking time. This is so awesome. We got the greatest job in the world. We get to hang with the coolest people in the world. And it's true. You know, and and yeah, are we partial to the fire service? Yeah. And you know what? We're not going to apologize for that because the fire service is full of incredible people. So just like to our to our viewers, just like just like John said, you know what? If if you want to be one of the great ones, pick the great ones to follow. Pick the great ones to emulate. Don't pick the buffoon. Don't pick the, the class clown or the jackass. You know, no, nobody want, after a while, nobody wants to be around the class clown. 
And and when 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 it hits the fan, and you're out there and you're making a hallway and things are going sideways inside that burning building, and you're out there and you're going, man, I wish I was in here with, I wish I was in with Pete, or I wish I was in with Big Daddy instead of these guys. You know, I'm just saying. All of a sudden now, you're wishing you were with that more into the job. I don't care. Yep. Five years on your department, fifty years in it does not does not matter. You can have five years on your department and be the same person we've been talking about with Big Daddy and these other people. You know what I'm saying? It's all about you. It's all about the yes. attitude you choose and the worth ethic you choose. Correct? Absolutely. All right, buddy. Hey, Absolutely. if they want to get a hold of you, best way to get a hold of Chief John Salka. Chief John Salka at gmail.com. <laughs> nice lead in, huh? I'm Chief Lasky. Pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. And uh, get a hold of us. Uh, we're, we're on uh, social media and, and, and everywhere else. Uh, you can catch us, said before, on our Hump Day Hangout. John and I are part of the five, as we call it. We ripped that off from Fox our, uh, uh, with uh, our good buddy, Chief Terry McGrath and Chief Scott Thompson from the Colony. And Chief uh, David Rhodes, when he joins us, those are, we have the third Wednesday on FireEngineering.com, so come see us there. There's always some great podcasts in the evening, some great podcasts going on. Uh, our, our, our producer, Mark's doing incredible stuff uh, w- with what we're doing, so there's always some great people. Uh, you can go to FireEngineering.com and look at that top bar, and you can find everything. The Fire Academy, you can find FDIs, you can find Fire Apparatus Journal, you can find gems, everything right there. Like John said earlier, just go to the internet, click on whatever you want to learn on. It's all there. Um, we're so glad. We're so glad you could join us. We end all of our shows with this very important phrase, and that is, please keep the men and women, our armed forces, your thoughts and prayers. And remember, never forgetting means just that, never forgetting. See you next time. God bless you, and thank you.